So it tells you the formula for the power output P of a battery is given by V times I minus R times I squared, where V is your electromotive force in volts, R is the resistance, and I is the current. Okay, we want to find the current, which is measured in amps or amperes, that corresponds to a maximum value of P in a battery for which V equals 12 volts, R is half an ohm. Assume that a 15 amp fuse bounds the output in the interval um, between 0 and 15. So that means I, the current, can only be between 0 and 15. So those are the endpoints of our interval here. So because we see the term maximum value, we should be thinking the derivative is equal to 0. Anytime you see maximums or minimums, you should think derivative equal to 0 because critical numbers are where maximums and minimums occur. <clears throat> Not all critical numbers are maxes and mins, but that's where we have the potential. So, um, first of all, let's plug in the stuff that doesn't change. They tell us that V is 12 volts and R is half an ohm. So go ahead and plug that into your equation. So our equation is 12 is e or excuse me, P is equal to 12 times I. I is what's changing, and that's what we're looking for, the current. I is the current. Uh, minus R.5 I squared. Okay, So really, I squared is our only variable in this equation here. So when we take the derivative, P prime is equal to the derivative of 12I is 12 minus 0.5 times 2i. So p prime is equal to 12 minus i. We set that equal to 0. And that tells us that i equals 12. Okay, so that's the potential for the maximum power. Okay, but we're on an interval, so we always check our endpoints. So when I is 0, 12, and 15, that's what we're looking for, okay? So when I is 0, uh, we have 0 power. That kind of makes sense. If there's no current running through, then we have no power. Okay, if we plug in 12, we're plugging this into the original power function, so 12 times 12, Minus 0 0.5 times 12 squared, so 144 uh, minus 72, right? 144 squared, half of that, 72, yeah, so 144 minus 72 is 72. And when it's 15, we have 12 times P equals 12 times 15 minus 0.5 times 15 squared. Definitely going to use my calculator on this one. 12 times 15 minus 0.5 times 15 squared. 67.5. <clears throat> So our maximum value on this interval does occur at our critical number of 12. Okay, so um, the current that corresponds to the maximum value of P is 12. Okay, 12 um, amps. Okay, uh, now there's a second part to this question. It says, could the power output be increased by replacing the 15 amp fuse with a 20 amp fuse? So the only thing that that changes are the bounds of our um, uh, domain here, okay? The 15 amp fuse prevented the current from being more uh, than 15. Um, so if we made that endpoint 20, would it change the answer? So all we have to do to answer this question is to also check uh, the power output for 20 amps. and see if that gives us a bigger number than uh, 72. Bless you. And it gives us a power output of 40. So no, it does not uh, increase 
our power output. And it should make sense because if we look at our power function, the power function is a quadratic um, and it has a negative coefficient with the i squared. So that means it's a, a downward facing parabola. So if our maximum is right here, then anything above that, any, um, <clears throat> excuse me, x value, or in this case i value above that, is going to have a lower power output. It kind of makes sense. Um, so no, it does not increase your power output by doing that. Okay, so the key to these problems, guys, is recognizing vocabulary. When it says maximum or minimums, you automatically think the derivative equal to zero. Um, be careful with a lot of these problems. They like to throw a bunch of extra variables in there, um, but a lot of times they either give you values for it, in this case they gave us values for V and R, or they'll tell you uh, V is a constant and R is a constant. So even if they didn't give us the values for V and R here, um, we would have still taken the derivative the same way. Um, if V is a constant, then the derivative for VI would be V right here. Um, if R was a constant, the derivative of R I squared would be 2R times I. So sometimes they do ask you to take the derivative of this and leave um, some constant values in there, and you'll have um, a variable expression as an answer. Sometimes, okay? Not very often, but every once in a while. Okay, so on that paper, I would like...